Welcome to a new edition of Optica Insights, where we explore deep tech trends in photonics with the leaders driving change. Today, we are speaking with David Lasowski, CEO of Celestial AI, a company pioneering photonic-enabled cloud computing to tackle one of the biggest challenges in AI and high-performance computing, the so-called memory wall. In this conversation, we'll discuss the impact of photonics on AI infrastructure, challenges, and solutions ahead. And of course, where Celestial AI is headed by 2030. Dave, great to have you here. Uh, Jose, thanks so much for having me. Let's dive in. To start with, would you give us an idea of the core bottleneck in AI and high-performance computing that you and your team spotted that led to the funding of Celestial AI? Yes, Celestial AI is the creator of the pho photonic fabric technology platform and the problem that we are addressing uh, within AI infrastructure is um, this, this shift right in the uh, bottlenecks for uh, artificial intelligence um, workloads from um, limitations in flops or uh, processing performance based on having all memory local on uh, system packages to now artificial intelligence models are so large that uh, they require um, many hundreds of uh, AI accelerators to be interconnected together, which has put an increasing emphasis on the importance of uh, interconnectivity bandwidth, both uh, processor to processor uh, interconnectivity to scale up network, as well as access to uh, high speed, high capacity, high bandwidth memory. Yeah, indeed, the memory work has been a major challenge for AI. Um, your proprietary technology platform, the so-called photonic fabric that everybody has been talking about for a year, fundamentally changed data movement between compute and memory. How did you come up with this idea? And can you tell us a bit about the secret sauce? Yeah, so the, the real key is deeper levels of integration of optical interconnectivity, right? So you, you really, every... And you've heard from Andy Beckerstein that every millimeter of copper matters. The reality is that every micron of copper matters because there are losses associated with uh, copper, both uh, RC product losses as well as um, inherent losses like ISI that drive noise. So by enabling um, thermally stable silicon photonics, which, which we uniquely have uh, in our technology platform, which is driven uh, by thermally stable modulation, we use uh, electroabsorption modulators in our photonic fabric uh, technology platform. It enables us to, to co-integrate um, silicon photonics at a level that is otherwise unprecedented, minimizing that copper distance in general. So it's only the, the, the packaging bumps effectively between our, our control electronics in four and five nanometer advanced CMOS and the silicon photonics. And the result of that is negligible uh, losses. So we have uh, really industry leading SNR, uh, industry leading bit error rate, which eliminates entirely the need for a digital signal processor. And Jose, once you take the DSP out of the equation um, uh, and retimers, for example, it completely changes the uh, performance levels in terms of bandwidth density. And it, it changes fundamentally the energy efficiency of these systems because the DSP is the largest contributor to both um, area and power in these systems. But that's for tomorrow. For today, you remember the Optic Apex Summit a few months ago, we started by saying that the competitors of the photonic companies are not the photonic companies. The competitors are the traditional electronic architectures. Could you give us some data on how Celestial solves the issue better than traditional electronic architectures? Yeah, so you know some of the challenges right now are increasing the number again of processors that are interconnected together in the scale up uh, network, right? So there's two different types of networks um, that are really driving artificial intelligence. There's scale out, which is top of rack uh, Ethernet connectivity. This is where the vast majority of um, co-packaged optics, for example, is, is, is currently focused, not an area that we are focused. Um, to your point, the area that we're addressing is processor to processor interconnectivity, which today is entirely copper, right? Okay. So it's NVLink, for example, um, and in switch, which are copper-based interconnect, it's best in class today. 
um, and uh, other alternatives such as PCIe links, right, which are which are far more inefficient. Um, so the keys there are, there are several metrics that need to be satisfied in order to provide a, a photonic solution to displace copper. It's not just about bandwidth, and the bandwidth minimum requirement is the the bandwidth that'll match HBM three E today um, and HBM four, which is eight terabits per second unidirectionally uh, going to 10 terabits per second. So it's 20 terabits per second of bidirectional bandwidth, right? So it's uh, it's a lot. Um, uh, then you have an energy efficiency uh, target. And, you know, that that target uh, for us is, you know, below the power of copper. Where we're sitting right now is um, less than about two and a half picojoules per bit. Um, and, and that makes it far more competitive, particularly at larger distances uh, than copper. And then you have a latency uh, specification, right? So um, the latencies that's, that are typically measured for these applications are for RDMA, remote direct memory access uh, applications. And for an NVLink, uh, for example, NV switch state of the art, that's measured in many hundreds of nanoseconds, typically on the order of six to 700 nanoseconds for an RDMA round trip transaction. We can significantly reduce that to um, less than 150 uh, nanoseconds, so a significant reduction um, in in uh, RDMA latency. And then the last metric that really matters also is cost, right? So um, one of the barriers I think that uh, have been discussed in co-packaged optics is is the cost uh, concerns, and that's where again because of our bandwidths. We've got absolutely breakthrough um, uh, capabilities from an economic efficiency standpoint. So our cost is less than five cents per gigabit per second of bandwidth. Five cents per gigabit per second. We had a few weeks to OFC, so I'm learning the new metrics. At Optica, uh, I, I, we dedicate our life to, to set up these partnerships that accelerate product development. Uh, what have you learned from major hyperscalers that influence your product development and go-to-market strategy? Are there areas where Optica corporate members can still help you? Uh, I'm sure there are, right? We're learning every day, um, you know, about uh, the, the rapid evolution of um, the artificial intelligence data center infrastructure requirements. So the way that we work, rather than offering a standardized product that, um, you know, and requesting basically just broad scale adoption of what's on the shelf, um, we engage in what are called collaborative development programs. So um, given the fact that this is an extremely concentrated market, right? So between the four big hyperscalers that uh, that are out there, right? The Microsoft's, Meta's, Google, um, AWS, um, and there are the ecosystem around them, um, which includes the two GPU manufacturers and um, a couple of um, different design services partners, right? The Broadcoms and Marvells of the world. You get eight companies that really represent roughly 90 plus percent yes. of what is growing to be a trillion dollar market. So, Jose, what that allows us to do is something different, right, than if we had 50 customers or even 25 customers. It allows us to basically give them what they want, right? And that starts by engaging with the architectural teams that are responsible for standing up data center infrastructure and working backward from the workload requirements that they have to develop bespoke solutions to meet specifically their needs for scale up networks and to enable them, frankly, to, to, to optimize the allocation of three different types of resources. Those resources are compute, right? Which is where a lot of the entire artificial industry is focused, right? The amount of flops, the amount of network interconnectivity bandwidth, and then the amount uh, of memory resources for high bandwidth, high speed, low latency, um, uh, directly connected uh, memory. Um it into the market, and of course, a lot of companies are appearing that they provide optical interconnects a lot. Every every week I hear a new one. It's uh, quite impressive. What sets Celestial AI apart from others in this space? Yeah, I'll tell you, um, as of right now, um, we are the only company that has the capability to meet the metrics for scale up networks, right? So like you said, there's a tipping point that is currently taking place, which I think is exciting for everybody in terms of 
um, the adoption uh, increasingly of optical interconnectivity at the package and at the device level. So um, you're seeing um, increasing momentum with co-packaged optics. Uh, we believe at GTC next week, uh, you'll hear um, NVIDIA uh, making an announcement around the adoption of co-packaged optics for InfiniBand and for Topper Rack uh, Switch. These are scale out networks, right? This is where uh, roughly 15% of the total uh, data center traffic um, is uh, takes place. What we're focused on and where we're uniquely positioned is for scale-up networks. And the minimum crit criteria there is, again, you, you need basically on the order of, um, you know, it, it's, it's 16 to 20 terabits per second of bidirectional bandwidth per chiplet. Um, and 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 a deeper level and a path right to hundreds of terabits per uh, per second of uh, bandwidth per package right uh, within AI accelerator packages. We can deliver that today, and we're designing that capability into customer solutions today. And it it sets us uh, apart in terms of really the only company in existence as of right now, and this will change. We anticipate that can provide a an optical solution for scale up networks that is not just competitive with NV Link and NV Switch um, in, in terms of performance levels, but exceeds the level of performance of state of the art copper today. Uh, can you give us a glimpse of advancements that we should expect from Celestial AI in the coming weeks, months, maybe a year? Yeah, so we are um, we're deeply um, uh, partnering again with multiple large scale hyperscalers, and um, these programs are are very you know confidential. Um, but uh, we we've got a lot of traction, um, not just in the engagements, which are funded collaborative development programs. Customers putting the skin in the game with us uh, to take our photonic fabric technology and design it into large scale systems. Um, these are volume runners measured in hundreds of thousands of units at the XPU level per quarter, right? Um, and we have uh, the initial implementations that our customers are using are chiplet-based uh, implementations in terms of uh, photonic fabric interconnectivity to their AI accelerators. So what that means for us is that there are multiple chiplets per unit and hundreds of thousands of their units a, a quarter, right? So the volumes are tremendous. The timing is uh, over the course of the next 18 months where those volumes will initiate qualification taking place between now and then. Um, and uh, so what we're focused on right now, uh, frankly, Jose, is just making sure the volume manufacturing capacity is in place with our supply chain, right? That's that's the priority, right? The, the technology is vetted, qualified, de-risked. Uh, the customers are engaged. Uh, we can talk a bit about the status of our financial position uh, with the news that we've just released uh, with the close of our Series C1 financing. So um, the area of focus for us in uh, calendar year 2025 is our supply chain, in particular, uh, the silica photonics supply chain um, and, the, uh, and, and, and the optics and lasers. What I'll tell you is our, our customers will consume um, more CWDFB lasers for photonic fabric applications through the second half of 27 and into 28 than exist globally today, right? So wow. the supply chain that's required is next level given uh, the volume and the scale applications of scale up networks for artificial intelligence infrastructure. Let's play the, the optimistic crystal ball game. Let's, uh, let's imagine it's the year 2030. What is your preferred future? How would Celestial AI look like? Well, um, you know, what, what we have done is um, just uh, just over the last couple of weeks is um, we have raised another round of financing that uh, was led by Fidelity. And so we raised $250 million with uh, Fidelity and BlackRock and Tiger Global and Maverick, large scale crossover funds um, uh, investing with us. In addition to the tremendous um, uh, larger scale uh, investor base uh, that we have, uh, including uh, Coke, Coke Disruptive Technologies, the largest private company in the United States, Tamasic, right, the uh, the um, Singaporean sovereign wealth fund that has nearly three hundred billion dollars uh, in AUM. But by, uh, in, in addition to our strategic investors, including AMD and Samsung and Penguin Systems, so what we've done is we've positioned ourselves for a successful outcome um, in an IPO, and uh, we're certainly tracking to that um, in the coming years. 
Um, you've seen some good, uh, high quality companies uh, go public with with positive results, including, uh, for example, Astera Labs, uh, right? That's done quite well in the public market. We do see that the public markets are opening up. Um, so, um, you know, and, and we we're going to be very well positioned both as a as a private company as well as a public company over the course of the next few years. In the last uh, year years. You have set up a very strong team. Actually, very nice people. I would like to congratulate you on that. I keep interacting with them. Extremely nice. But uh, a few months ago, you had a really big name coming to your board of directors, uh, Lee Bhutan, who is a legend, a legend in our industry. What does he bring to the table? You know, um, you, you always hear that having the right people right involved in the organization, um, there's no substitute for it. And, and uh, I, I can't emphasize that um, uh, strongly enough. So our, our board of directors is um, and has been uh, tremendous. Last year, we added Diane Bryant um, to the board who, uh, um, you know, who used to lead Intel server business. She was at Intel for over 30 years. She's currently on the board of Broadcom. Uh, we had added uh, Bethany Mayer uh, to the board of directors, um, who is um, on the board of HPE. She's on the board of Astera, on the board of LAM Research. She's the chairman of the board of Box. Um, they both bring just tremendous experience, and in, in including operating experience as, as executives. Lipbu complements them extraordinarily well and is really an icon right, in the semiconductor industry in this entire new emerging field of artificial intelligence. Um, he is so unbelievably well connected with not just knowing people, but having established and developed and nurtured relationships with every critical uh, leader in our industry over the course of the last three decades. That coupled with his direct operational experience, he knows what it takes to lead companies. He knows what it takes to build um, the world's best teams in our industry. Um, he's he's by far the, uh, the, the the best possible option uh, for filling this board seat that we have. We're thrilled to have Libu involved with Celestial AI. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time today, for sharing your vision of Celestial AI and for your amazing support to Optica. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me.